Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Interstigation. In today's episode of Interstigation, I will go over the tangent angle sum identity, which basically wants the tangent of two angles added together. Let's call them alpha and beta to be represented in terms of in terms of uh, this tangent alpha and tangent beta. Of course, you can include any constants that you will have in the expression, but the, any variables, we can only have tangent alpha and tangent beta. To try to prove this geometrically, because everyone knows that tangent is equal to sine over cosine. So like this, sine of alpha plus beta over cosine of alpha plus beta. But it doesn't really, isn't really fun to do it like that, and everyone can do it algebraically, and it's very tedious, in fact, to do that, but can try to do it in geometric shapes so that it becomes simpler and another way to solve a problem is just better. Let's see. Let's draw the angles first. We have two angles. Let's just make them at one vertex. Let's say, let's name this alpha and name this beta. And obviously, since there's tangent, there's trigonometry, let's put it in the right triangle so it's easier to prove. So let's draw some perpendicular lines. So this is a little bit offside like this. This is perpendicular to this. And we want this to be perpendicular as well. And let's try to draw that. Actually, let's draw this perpendicular line inside. And let's see whether or not we can manipulate it so that we can represent the tangent of this. However, if we want to find the tangent of this angle, we need to find this to this. From tangent of alpha, we have this side and this side. However, it is not so easy to calculate the length of this side because there's no right tri triangle anywhere. So we can try to construct another right triangle with this. So let's construct another one like this, something like that. And if we have this, then we can connect this side to this side so that this is another, let's say this is another right angle as well. So let's see. It is easier to do the tangent in this smaller triangle because the side length of it are easier to find. Let's try to do that in this smaller triangle. Before we do that, however, we can label our points. Let's say this is A, B, C. Let's say this is D, E, F, and G. See how can we represent that. First of all, let's say that the tangent of alpha plus beta, that is equal to the value of FD over the value of AD. We can simplify that further to be, so the value of FD, this side. Well, this side, it can be simplified as very easy. That is just equal to the value of EB. So this side length, because these are parallel and this are parallel and these are all perpendicular to each other. It's a rectangle. So that is EB plus FG over the value of AB, because AB, we know that AB through the tangent of alpha. So that is AB minus the value of GE, also from that rectangle. And what we have over here, we want to manipulate it into the tangent values of alpha and beta. Let's see what values of some acute angles that we can find. Well, one of the acute angle is this one, this acute angle. And we want to find this value because we have, let's say, FG, it requires that. We have GE, it also requires that. So it will be beneficial if we can find the value of that. Well, 
if we extend this line segment over here, we can find out that if we extend this over here, we can find out since this angle is alpha and we have this perpendicular, I forgot to draw it, this is a perpendicular line, so that we can have this, this value is 90 minus alpha, and since this is also perpendicular, we now have this value as alpha. Now like that. And let's write some expressions that we can. So let's first write GE. How can we manipulate GE? Well, GE, so let's just write it over here. GE over FG is equal to the tangent of alpha. Therefore, we want to find the value of GE. So GE is equal to FG tangent alpha. And we also need to find the value of EB. So EB over AB is also the value of tangent alpha. So EB, EB is equal to AB times tangent alpha. And that we can substitute it in. So looks like this. EB is equal to AB tangent alpha. So tangent alpha is the ones that we are interested in. AB times tangent alpha plus F plus FG. That is that. Over this AB, AB is just AB. Plus this FG. So we want minus actually minus the value of GE, which is actually equal to FG. So that is FG times tangent alpha. We have like that. Well, AB plus FE, FG, we know that on both sides of the fraction, we have AB and FG, we can try to elim eliminate one of them. And that we can divide both sides on the fraction by AB. So that is equal to tangent alpha plus this FG over AB over this AB is just 1 minus FG over AB times tangent alpha. This is what we have. Obviously, we know that it is symmetrical. What we, start, what we start off is symmetrical. What we end off should also be symmetrical. So somehow, there should be tangent beta as well. We can try to represent this value to be tangent beta, to be some form of tangent beta. Fg over Ab. We want to find this value. Well, Let's try to represent FG and AB separately. So this is what we want now. We want to find this value. FG, let's look at this triangle over here, FG. Well, we have the angle alpha over here. So FG over, let's see how can we represent it in angle beta. Angle beta, well, tangent beta does include this. So we're interested in this triangle over here. So this triangle over here. Well, tangent beta consists of FE and AE. Let's try to represent it somehow. FG is over this FE. Let's write it like this. So FG over FE. Well, let me get it the same color. FG over FE is equal to this cosine of alpha. So we can get that Fg is equal to Fe cosine of alpha. Well, similarly, we can get, get Ab in terms of Ae. That Ab over Ae is equal to also cosine of alpha. So that we can have Ab so AB is equal to AE cosine of alpha. We can then write this fraction. So 
So this fraction, Fg over Ab, that is equal to Fe cosine of alpha, cosine of alpha, over Ae cosine of alpha. We can cancel out the cosine of alpha, then we get Fe over Ae. What is the value of Fe over Ae? Obviously, that is the value of tangent beta. So that is tangent beta and is exactly what we want. And last step, we can plug this back in. We get tangent alpha plus tangent beta over 1 minus tangent alpha times tangent beta. And this is the exact expression that you will get if you try to manipulate it algebraically. However, this geometric proof only limits within acute angles, but the algebraic proof can have any angle that you want. You can have angle alpha exceeding 180 degrees even, but this proof only satisfies alpha and beta less than or equal to 90 degrees. But I can assure you that this expression over here does apply to angles greater than 90 degrees. Thank you for watching this episode of Interstication, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.